So I'm uh, Wolfgang Siebert from Rock and Roll Wolf. I do productions and music festivals and shows. I run bus tours, collect tickets, and have a long history of 55 years of collecting rock and roll paraphernalia, whether it's buttons, posters, stickets, passes, programs. I've collected a large number. I've been to over 2,500 shows that I still have the tickets for to collect from the early 60s. I started booking bands with my friends in high school back in 68, 69. We would book Gatto, Teenage Head, Rush, Triumph when they were just kids. So we knew those guys as kids in high school and just after high school. And then over the early days of rock when it was more freer, we started doing show concerts and running bus tours and other festivals. And that's how I met Glenn. And he started working shows with me and joining us in a lot of rock and roll concerts. Right. So Glenn will give you a little yeah, history. I go back, obviously I'm 70, so I'm around since the late 60s. When I started going to shows, Alice Cooper was my first big concert. I did see a couple of local bands, Tranquility Bass yeah. and things like that earlier, but Alice Cooper was the start. And I met you not long after that. Right. And we shared a passion for rock and roll. We end up going to a lot of the same shows. Even when we weren't going together, we'd see each other. Yeah. And uh, so I've been to probably over a thousand shows. And like the Stones, I've seen 79 times, The Who, 74. Not quite as many as Wolf, but Wolf would travel with bands and other things. So he had opportunity to hit more cities than I yeah. did. And I also helped Wolf out when he did production of the big major outdoor festivals, yeah. which the, Wolf was really the first person to do that. In the 70s and 80s, we did a lot of the big outdoor festivals. The Tragically Hip was one of our first big outdoor festivals. The Police Picnic, uh, Heat Wave, Canada Talking Jam. Talking Heads, all Talking kinds heads. of bands. So yeah. We got lucky and got involved in the major shows. I ended up working with the people at Cal Jam. And the Cal Jam people were the major promoters of California. And I became good friends with them and worked Chicago Jam with them. And that opened the door for me to work with other bands and produce concerts because I worked with the biggest group in California at that time. And that gave me credibility to do music festivals. And at the same time, I could get passes from the bands or the road managers or we'd buy bus tours and tickets. So we were deeply involved in... All yeah, the major You would concerts. always give me the backstage passes for Rush, yeah. the Police, various other bands. We were backstage at Live Aid in Philly, yeah. which was amazing. Yeah. But I was the finance guy for Wolf, pulling together the money for these shows that we did. And then Wolf ended up getting his own rock and roll park, yeah. Port Cliff Park. Port Cliff park, and park he, for a while. He did some very historic. We actually showed some of the pictures early of yeah. Ricky Nelson and Burton Cummings mm -hmm. and Tragically Hip. And you'll see all these in the episodes when we talk about various types of collectibles, the things that we have. But it, Wolf and I had a passion for not only rock and roll, but the collectibles. And not that many people collected back then. A lot of people bought a tour shirt to wear, but right. we collected it. We'd buy four tour shirts to put away. We'd yeah. be searching the ground for people who didn't keep their tickets stopped. And, and buy know, the programs and posters yeah, and just extras. store them We would years. buy one. We would buy multiples every time. So... We've always been into the collectibles right from the start. There's a lot of people been in rocks in the 60s, but they weren't into the collectibles. And that's why you're going to find these episodes. We really focus on the rock and roll memorabilia collectible market. And we're going to go through all the various aspects of different types of collectibles. We're going to show you rare tickets and tell you what they're worth. We're going to tell you what Beetle tickets are worth. We're going to show you unique programs and posters. Autographs. Everything. Autographs and odd collections that you don't see but were sold at the tours, such right. as license plates and patches and bobbleheads and pins. And we're going to give you an education of all the different kinds of rock and roll stuff that was sold and what it is worth now. Stuff that was sold in the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. Yeah. And then we're gonna just educate you. Hey, this is what your ticket's worth. This is what your jacket's worth. This is what your poster or program's worth. Or we educate you which bands are worth more than other bands. Right. Well, and if you wanna start collecting what to buy as an investment or not. Um, I own a company called Glory Days Collectibles in Toronto where we are right now. And we have, uh, if you check our site, glorydayscollectibles.com, there's probably ten or 11,000 items up there. Now, sports is still a little bit bigger for us. Even though my passion is rock and roll, sports is still a big business. And so you're, you're going to go through a lot of sports items on our site. But you can search by music or something and then see the items. But we also have an eBay store. We have, I think, 11,000 items on eBay. 
lots of great rock items. We're buying every day. I bought a collection this morning. So anyone who's looking at our episodes, they want to reach out to Wolf, we, we can help you with an appraisal of an item. We can help you source items, find them. We'll buy items on off you if you want to turn them into cash. But we, and the higher the end, the more we want it. We're yeah. looking for the rarest, best items, and we'll pay the appropriate amount to get those. So um, we're definitely, you're going to learn a lot about collectibles, and maybe you want to make it into a business like me, or just have a passion like Wolf, and just collect everything because you love it. And on our webpage, we'll show you thousands of tickets, hundreds of posters, hundreds and hundreds of programs. So if you're looking to collect certain things, like if you want the Who, I've seen all the Who shows in the Golden Horseshoe, and I have all the programs, all the posters, all the tickets, and they're on my webpage. So if you're a Who fan and you want to collect Who programs or tickets or passes, you can check our webpage for it. Right. Or if you're a fan of other rock and roll bands, we have the programs, and if you want to collect Elton John, we, you can see the 20 Elton John programs we have. And your webpage is going to be rock and roll rock and roll wolf dot com. Com. Okay. And we're going to have all that stuff and more on those web pages to give you ideas of what is collectible and what is out there to collect. Because a lot of people... We and can show through these episodes, you'll be able to reach out to Wolf yeah. and get a hold of him. And if you want to ask questions or you want to meet with us... If it's yeah. a big enough collection, we'll fly and come and meet you if somebody wants to sell a collection. I mean, yeah. it doesn't have to be in Ontario here. We, yeah. we definitely collect from anywhere in the world. Right. And we'll show you also some rock and roll videos that we did on shows and some odd collectible stuff that people didn't even know was around. Right. You know? You've brought things in today I didn't even know existed. So in spite of the fact you could be doing it for 50 years or 55 years, right. you're always learning something new. Yeah. Because there's always some bands like... Hart would give license plates at their show, but no other band would ever sell license plates, you know. So we would show the oddball stuff of rock and roll to give you an education. And if you're a collector of posters or buttons or stickers, you can go on our webpage and see thousands of those so you know what you're missing in your collection. Right. That's great.